Hi everyone, in this video we're just going to be taking a look at using gradients for digital artists or anyone else that uses Photoshop. So to actually find the gradient tool, you need to come to this left hand panel and where your paint bucket tool is, we're going to right click and then we're going to select gradient tool. Once that's selected over here, you can just hit G on your keyboard and that will bring the tool up straight away. So in your foreground and background colours that you've got selected down here on the left, whatever colours you have, are going to be the colours that you use for the gradient. So I'll select two random ones for now. And once you're happy with your colour choice, I can click on screen and drag down. And once I let go, that creates a gradient, like so. So that is our most basic form of using the gradient tool. You can control the strength of the gradient by the distance that you make it. So when I click, if I only drag down a little bit and let go, we've got quite a sharp gradient there. So basically where you first click is where your gradient starts and where you release it is where your gradient ends. And as you can see it goes in the direction that you draw it, like so. I'm just undoing these between each one. If you want it perfectly straight you can also, when you're clicking, before you release it, if you hold down shift on your keyboard, it will make sure that it goes in uh, straight or diagonal angles. You will notice along this top panel we do have a few options. I'm not actually going to be playing around with these. Um, you can probably figure out what most of these do. For example, the reverse option just reverses the foreground and background colour. We're not going to take a huge look at these because I only want this to be a really basic tutorial. But you can also see other kinds of gradients you've got along this top bit here. So I'm going to select a different one just to give you an example. Let's take a look at another one. Okay but you'll probably find that you normally stick to this first one anyway. One other worthwhile thing to note is this option here which shows our gradient. There's some sort of pre-selected patterns, let's call them here. Generally people would probably stick to this first one, but this second option is also really handy. It takes your foreground colour and it replaces the background colour, which in our case is a really light blue, and it just makes it transparent, like so. So if there was something in the background there, it would still show through. So this can be really handy in digital painting depending on how you work. And the same things apply as before even with this, so the shorter distance creates a shorter gradient and vice versa, just as a transparent option for the second colour. One other super easy way to create a gradient, which I actually prefer, if you're using a tablet that's got pen pressure, I would go to the brush tool, the shortcut for that on the keyboard is just B, and then I would select any of the soft round brushes. I'm going to use soft round pressure opacity, and I'm going to make this brush really large. And once you've done that, you can just draw on your gradient. So I started by pressing hard there, and then as I'm coming down, I'm just very gently pressing to get the gradient that I want. Personally, I prefer this, but it's not going to be as precise or as neat as using the gradient tool. But it is a quick alternative for those who prefer it. It's also worth noting that if you've got anything selected, you can draw within that selection. So I've just created a quick circle there. Let's pick our gradient tool again, and you can use that within there, and once you deselect that, it stays just where you had selected. So there's tons of ways you can actually use this. We're going to take a quick look at something I've drawn very quickly just for the purpose of this video. So I've created a very basic hairstyle, and I'm going to use the gradient tool just to give this hair a little bit of colour, almost like having highlights. So I've created a layer above my hair colour, and in this case, I only want to select where the hair colour is because I don't want to paint outside of that. So my option is to either hold down control and select the layer thumbnail on the hair colour. So this is just the layer that has my hair colour on it. And you can see that how this has selected it. And whilst that's selected, we can only paint within these lines regardless of what layer we're on. Alternatively, seeing as it's the layer above, I could just hold down Alt on my keyboard and select between the two layers to link them together like that. And that has the same effect, so I can only paint again within those lines. I'm sure there are other ways as well. So I'm going back to my gradient tool. I'm going to select a color that I want to use. I'm going to keep mine on the transparent option. And just like we did earlier, I'm going to drag to create a gradient. I'm going to start from the bottom this time because I only want it on the bottom of a hair. And I'm just doing it bit by bit here in small amounts. I could have probably gone in with a larger one like this. But yeah, I'm going to keep doing that bit by bit until I'm happy with this look. I could even go in and choose a different colour and create some smaller gradients lower down within that. 
or I could even select above the hair if I wanted it darker up here just to give you an example. So you can see the difference that that makes to the hair colour. Gradients can be quite effective and there really are tons of different ways that you could use them so that is only a really basic look at it. But hopefully that gives you a place to start from and you can play around with all different options there and just try and find what fits your workflow best. So I'm going to leave it at that guys. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Let me know in the comments below what other kind of videos you guys want to see. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please hit the thumbs up button, leave me a comment below, and make sure you hit the subscribe button for more content. Thanks guys.